You're watching KCRG TV9. Now from your 24-hour news source, this is TV9 News Nightcast. You just pay, paid for your hockey tickets. Should you have to pay for parking as well? Parking for a price is our top story Saturday, Saturday January 15th. Good evening, I'm Joe Coffey. Cedar Rapids Rough Riders fans might have to pay more money to watch their team at the new ice arena. The management is considering a parking fee. No fee has been finalized yet, but current plans call for a $2 charge for what the arena would call preferred parking. Rough Rider fans have mixed reactions to the news. As Nightcast reporter David Scott tells us, the arena says it should come as no surprise. Fans enjoying Saturday night's Rough Riders game inside the new arena may have enjoyed their last night of free parking outside the arena. Management company Polar Ice may start charging for these spaces. The current idea is a $2 fee for those spots the company considers closest to the arena. General Manager Jim Wincoop. Right now we've made the decision not to do it today. Uh, down the road, it's something that, you know, is a, is a part of what we need to do. Thank you. Already paying for tickets, what do fans have to say about this? Charging for parking, I like it the way it is now. That'd be unfortunate, I think, if they had to do that. Now, we should be clear that Polar Ice is not trying to pull a fast one on anyone here. The company points out that in its original contract with the city, there's a clause that grants the company the right to charge for parking if they so desire. We certainly don't want to be looked at as the people who brought paid parking to Cedar Rapids, but um, at the same time, it's, you know, it's part of what the city uh, and Polar Ice worked on to, to help get the deal done. No fans we met said a $2 parking fee would keep them from coming back. The real factor in that, most say, is Rough Rider hockey itself. I think it's too early to tell. I mean, it could depend a lot on, you know, how good the team is. If it's worth watching, I paid it for parking. In Cedar Rapids, David Scott, KCRG TV9 News, Nightcast. Arena General Manager Jim Wincoop says the parking fee could be imposed starting next week. However, it might be next season or it might not happen at all. Wincoop says the fee would only be charged at hockey games and other special events, not for everyday open skating. A Dubuque girl is suffering from multiple injuries after being hit by a car. The driver took off and police are on the lookout. It happened in the 400 block of West Locust Street in Dubuque shortly after 2 o'clock this afternoon. Police need your help in finding the suspect. Witnesses descri describe the old car as a smaller hatchback similar to a Dodge Omni or a Ford Escort. It's a lighter shade of blue or silver gray in color. The front passenger window is missing and replaced with plastic. The injured girl's name is not being released. If you have any information about this accident, you're urged to call the Dubuque Police Department. Parents in Iowa City are urged to take precaution. Police say an older man is approaching young boys with the intent of performing or engaging in sexual acts. There have been two cases in the past week, one involving a six-year-old and the other a seven-year-old. Both happened in or near public restrooms. The suspect is described as a balding white man, 50 to 60 years old, with a possible shuffle to his walk. Police are investigating a murder in Alamakee County. Police believe they have their man, but they're still investigating. It happened in a downtown Postville apartment at 2 o'clock this morning. The man in custody is charged with first-degree murder. The Department of Criminal Investigation is assisting with the ongoing murder investigation. An Eastern Iowa bank president is forgiving the man who bound him with duct tape and held him at gunpoint. The Walford bank robber is 21-year-old Jesse Weiss of Oklahoma. Weiss attacked bank president Bruce Irusha at Farmer State Bank last May. According to the Gazette, Irusha is happy with a plea agreement made yesterday. A district judge sentenced Weiss to 15 years in prison on five charges. Republican presidential hopefuls have answers for Iowans. They talked about the big issues in Iowa in a televised debate. Hear from all six candidates coming up. The Democrats are keeping pace. They're making campaign stops in Iowa, too. We'll have the latest on Gore and Bradley's battle next on your 24-hour news source, KCRG TV9. From the news team that brings you more news more often, Joe Coffey, meteorologist Scott Lynn, and Scott Sable with sports. This is TV9 News Nightcast.
Republican presidential contenders make their last debate points before the Iowa caucuses. Texas Governor George W. Bush and Arizona Senator John McCain argued about tax cut plans. Publisher Steve Forbes ridiculed managed health care rules, and all the candidates made a last-minute appeal for Iowa caucus goers. Nightcast reporter Dave Franzman has more on the verbal sparring. All the Republicans found something to argue about. For Texas Governor George Bush and Arizona Senator John McCain, their squabble erupted over taxes. Both candidates have pushed their own tax cut proposals. When Bush accused McCain's plan of increasing taxes for lower income workers, Here's what came back. Governor Bush's plan has not one penny for Social Security, not one penny for Medicare, and not one penny for paying down the national debt. And when you run ads say you're going to take care of Social Security, my friend, that's all hat and no cattle. I, uh... <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, that's cute, but, uh... <laughs> Candidates did not clash on every question. For instance, one question about restoring moral values to the White House brought a unanimous criticism of President Clinton. I think the seven, last seven years has been an aberration, not a reflection of the values of the American people. When this president said on MTV, I didn't inhale, that sent the wrong message to every kid in this country. Few other contenders disagreed with publisher Steve Forbes' response to giving patients more power in a battle with managed health care insurers. It's absolutely ridiculous in America today that you have to go through an appeals process if you're not satisfied with the care you get. You know, if you want to go from Wendy's to McDonald's, you don't need an act of Congress. Alan Keyes offered one of the more radical ideas during the debate. I think it's time that as a tax-enslaved people, we rise up and make it clear. We want the chains off. Abolish the income tax. For Iowa voters, this was the last time to see all six Republicans go head-to-head -head in a debate format. The Republicans will debate again January 26th, but in New Hampshire. That's two days after the Iowa caucus results, which should give them something new to talk about. Dave Fransman, KCRG, TV9 News, Nightcast. America. Now, the Democrats are not States. without presence in Iowa. Former New Jersey Senator Bill Bradley was on the campaign trail in Cedar Rapids today. Bradley is under fire for receiving farm subsidy payments. That's something he criticized his rival for taking. Gore and Bradley will debate one more time before the Iowa caucuses. The face-off is Monday in Des Moines. Still to come, how will the Cuban custody battle end? People on both sides fight on to keep this six-year-old. And it's not just Americans and Cubans rallying for the battle of Elian Gonzalez. We'll tell you who else is speaking out. We'll have details when we come back on your 24-hour news source, KCRG TV9. These Cubans are demanding the return of one of their own. The protesters want six-year-old Elian Gonzalez to come home. They demonstrated live on Cuban television today. The rally came the day after an initial deadline for the boy's return. You'll recall Elian survived a November boat accident that claimed his mother and stepfather's lives. He's been in the U.S. with relatives ever since. Now, this custody battle goes beyond the U.S. and Cuba. Now, Haitian Americans are getting involved. Haitian Americans in Miami say the way the U.S. is handling the situation isn't fair. They say even if Elian goes back to Cuba, most Cubans are offered U.S. citizenship if they make it to U.S. soil. Meanwhile, most Haitian refugees are sent back to Haiti. The Haitian Americans believe the history of Cuban-American protests have influenced the U.S. immigration policy, so now the Haitian Americans are protesting too. The treatment of illegal immigrants in Italy has sparked a violent protest. Demonstrators were gathering outside a center for illegal immigrants near Rome. In Italy, illegal immigrants are held in the centers for 30 days while their identities and nationalities are checked. The demonstrators were protesting the deaths of three Tunisians who died in one of the centers. But the protest led to violence. Police used tear gas and batons to control the crowd. Meteorologist Scott Lynn joins us now on this wonderful Sunday evening.
Nice Saturday weather today. Evening, Saturday evening. Saturday okay. We're, we're well, both. What day is it? I, we get Monday and Tuesday off. <laughs> the so nice weather ahead, threw right? me off. Yeah, that's right. It was a gorgeous really day. Was. I wish I could say we're just going to see a repeat of tomorrow. But those folks that are saying it's winter, we need cold weather. Well, <laughs> you may win out. The first alert forecast is next for Masonville, Springville, and the rest of Eastern Iowa. It's next on your 24-hour news and weather source, KCRG TV9. Now here's a look at today's winning lotto numbers. And welcome back. Well, hope you had a fantastic Saturday. And if you enjoyed some of the great weather outdoors, you weren't alone. Some video from uh, Jones Park here off to my left side. And uh, some folks getting out there and enjoying the very nice weather. And really, at this hour, it's still very nice. Let's take a look at the Hawkeyes. And we'll start with the conditions in Iowa City. 30 degrees right now, calm winds, and 92% is the relative humidity. Looking live at Cedar Rapids, the Cedar Rapids and Marion Hawkeye, 33 degrees right now. West winds at 12 and 75% your relative humidity. In Waterloo and Cedar Falls, we're at 35 degrees north. West winds at 18. The pressure sitting at 30.05 inches of mercury and rising. And in Dubuque, currently we're at 34 degrees south. West winds at 3. 72% is our relative humidity. Here's a look at the Almanac data for you. High of 48 degrees in both Cedar Rapids and Iowa City. Fantastic. 49 in Waterloo and 45 in Dubuque. And we're going to try to make everybody happy in this weather cast, which isn't always an easy thing to do. Some of you like the warm weather. Some of you are going to enjoy what's coming. But check this out. If you are a fan of warm weather, well, you have liked this January. So far, only about halfway through the month, we are almost up to the warm January we had in 1997. And basically, you could add together the days of 40 and 50 degree high temperatures in both 98 and 99, and we are surpassing that already with half a month to go. However, as I've kind of alluded to already, it looks like we're not going to see too many 40s or 50s for highs in the next week. Your seven day just a moment or two away here. Here's a look at temperatures around the state right now. Still pretty warm. 30s over most of the area. Over a few 20s now working into the north as a cold front is beginning to dip its way into Iowa, and that will be the story tomorrow with cooler temperatures about uh, 15 to 20 degrees cooler. However, that's still above normal. Joe Beams in Mount Pleasant, 39 degrees currently, 38 in Tama, and 32 in Dyersville. Max Dirks checking in from Scotch Grove at 36 degrees, 36 also in Old Wine, and 33 in Ken Ross. And as we move on to page three, there it goes. Oh, actually, page three seemed to disappear there. Okay. Overnight tonight, 24 degrees for our low temperature. We'll see partly cloudy skies, 28 for the morning hours with mostly cloudy skies, and then more clouds in the afternoon. A high temperature tomorrow of 34 degrees. A ways away from our highs today, but that's because the southwest winds out there will be turning to the north at 7 to 14. So colder air working in, and this is a sign of things to come as more cold air will work in as we head towards the start of the work week. Right now, just some clouds off and on through the area. We really have had a mixed bag of sun and clouds during the day today. Some activity up towards the north that we'll continue to keep an eye on because that is where our next system will come from. Tonight, this cold front moves through, brings in the colder air, thus the drop in temperatures tomorrow. And then a system begins to build out to the west, kind of kind of come down from the northwest as a clipper, and we could see some snow or some mixed precipitation as we head towards Monday. Could be a little bit messy. Teens over the central part of the state, 20s in our area for overnight lows tonight. Highs tomorrow will warm into the 30s with 40s staying down to the south and cooler weather in the offing for us. Your pinpoint future cast, watch the time under the 9 as we watch more clouds roll in. Kind of an area of clearing working over the state right now. But through the day, more and more clouds that will continue into the afternoon and evening hours. In fact, as we head towards late Sunday night and early Monday morning, here comes the snow. The snow in southeast Iowa could mix with some freezing rain. That's our main concern as we start the seven-day forecast. It looks like it could be a mixed bag right through the day Monday. Should wrap up by Monday evening, though. Quiet on Tuesday and into Wednesday. Slight chance of snow Thursday. The big story towards the end of the week, temperatures that will actually be, get this, guys, below normal. How long has it been since we've talked about <laughs> below normal temperatures this time of year? So it looks like a little bit of winter at least will be returning for the week's end. Cold stuff coming back. Then. You bet. Thanks, Scott. Yep. John Campbell joins us now for sports. John, a big win for uh, Iowa wrestling today. The Hof Hofstra Flying Dutchman. Mm. We're at Carver Hawkeye Arena tonight. Highlights of that. Hockey, hoops, and everything else next on your 24-hour news source, KCRG TV 9.